he's driving his car, rabbit comes out in the road and he tries to swerve to avoid the rabbit but winds up hitting it. Goes out to check on the rabbit and the rabbit's dead. He's pretty sad about that when all of a sudden another car pulls up, a woman jumps out with a spray can in her hand and sprays it all over the rabbit. Rabbit all of a sudden jumps back up to life, hops down the road about 50 yards, turn around and waves. Hops down another 50 yards, turn around and waves. Hops down another 50 yards and turn around and waves. Man goes, what, what, what's in that can? What is that? Woman goes, hairspray. Brings dead hair back to life, adds permanent wave. Receptivity prayer. <laughs> Let's say it together. I am open to the evolution of my soul. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My next step is here and now. Bang. <laughs> Progress can be made. We are all trainable in one way or another. Some of us takes longer than others. Today I want to talk to you about pruning. Because what happens is, is we all love those seasons. When it, we bear fruit, we're in the flow, synchronicity is flowing, everything is going fantastically. Can you hear me all right? Let's turn it up just a little bit, please. Is that better? Yep? Good. Turn it up more. Turn it up more. Maybe we're not getting any signal here. Okay. Turn it up even more. All right. Ah, now I can hear it. You should be able to hear that. Okay. We all love those seasons when everything is in flow. When everything's working out, we're getting all this, we're bearing all this fruit, we're in abundance and everything's going wrong are going fantastically, but the thing is, is it would be unhealthy to simply have one season. After we bear fruit, the tree must then be pruned back to prepare for its next time of blooming. You have to prune, prune to bloom. And so that happens to us all the time. And when we get caught in a season of pruning, a lot of times what happens is, is we go crazy like, oh my God, what did I do wrong? How did I fall out of grace of God? How come I'm no longer in the flow? When in fact, it is a part of the natural flow of life to go through a season of pruning before the next blooming. That loss that diagnosis, that time of hardship that you may be going through is setting you up for your next rise, is pruning you so that the next thing that occurs for you is greater than what you had before it. What's going on is this is a time of pruning. This is a time when instead of falling back into discouragement, instead of falling back into, oh no, what am I gonna do now? To remember what it is we have on the wall out there, which is to abandon the truth in your hour of need is to not understand the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is, is that you are a powerful, creative, spiritual being whose life works magnificently even when it doesn't look like it. That everything going on in your life is for your good. You are being pruned to rise to the next place of excellence. You are being pruned so that you can then bloom. Say it after me. I am being pruned to bloom. I am being pruned to bloom. That's it. That's exactly what it is that we need to remember especially in our time of need. I know so many people who after their time of need, after their time of pruning, rose to something greater than they even thought was possible. They rose up to a time when things were different and they were different. I know that that's true for me. 
I know that I am not the same person I was before I went through some of the adversity I've gone through in my life. I'm certainly not the same person after being told I only had three days to live when I was in the hospital. When we change, when those things happen to us and we take them on as a pruning, recognizing the truth of what it is we teach here, then we get to rise to that next thing that is for us, even if we don't know what it is. Certainly I didn't. The last thing I ever thought I'd wind up being in my life, being born Jewish and all, is a minister. And yet it was the magnificent thing that happened to me that allowed me to rise in a way that would have never occurred had I not go through the diversity I I have gone through. I heard about a baseball player. When he was a kid, he was the best of the best. He was always better than the other kids, played really well, and so when he got to that high school age, tried out for some of the national teams in Little League national teams at the higher level, what they're called challenge teams, and he, of course, got into one and was the best player on the team that year. Unfortunately, the other players on the team were jealous of him. So they badmouthed him to the coach. The coach believed the players and the following year was not invited back to play. By the time he found out that he wasn't invited back, all the other teams had already gotten all their players, and so for the first time in his life, he didn't get to play baseball in the summer. Now, for many folks, that would have just been a downer. That would have been like, oh my God, how could, woe is me, how could this happen to me? But instead, what he did was he went to the batting cage every single day. He had his friends hit him fly balls as often as he could get them to do it to practice his fielding. All summer long, he just kept at it. The following year, no team would take him again. But one day while he was practicing at the batting cage, a major league scout saw him and invited him to try out for a minor league team. He not only made the team, he went on to have one of the most successful careers in baseball, played like 23 years. He could have easily said, oh no, I'm beaten. This wasn't meant to be. But by allowing it to be a pruning by keeping at what it is he needed to keep at, he got a chance to rise in a way that many of us don't get that chance. Maybe if he'd been on a team, he wouldn't have had the practice. He wouldn't, certainly wouldn't have been seen by the scout because the scout was at the batting cage. It wasn't at, out with the teams. So somehow, miraculously, he got spotted in his worst setback because he kept going. And that's what's there for us, to remember that in the worst of times can rise out of that the best of times. That's the idea, you have to believe. You have to believe these big challenges are actually there for your good. I know it's hard, it's hard for me, but it doesn't change the fact that this is how our Principles work. This is how the goodness we get to have. This is when we get to feel that place in ourselves that gets to rise is when we remember in our darkest hour that this is where the sun gets to shine. This is where we get to stand up and be who we have come here to be. I heard the story about how eagles raise their young. Little eaglet in the nest, warm, fuzzy, enjoying the other eaglets. Dad comes and brings them food every day. The mom just kind of cuddles with him. Eaglet's having this great life. Then one day, the mom picks the eaglet up and takes him out soaring. 
And the eaglet's having a great time. Look at me, I'm soaring, my mom's got me, everything's wonderful. And she goes higher and higher and higher and then drops him. And the eaglet starts falling towards the earth at 90 miles an hour. Now I can imagine the eaglet going, oh my God, are you crazy, mom? Do you want to kill me? Why would you have abandoned me like this? And the eagle's falling and falling and falling, totally freaking out, and just before it hits the ground, the mother comes along, grabs the eaglet, saves the baby, and the eaglet's thinking, okay, phew, that was rough. We're going back to the nest now. No. Eagle flies higher and higher and higher and drops it again and drops it again and drops it again until finally the eaglet realizes it has these things on the side of its body that if it actually starts wiggling might keep it afloat until finally that eaglet realizes it can fly and then it starts flying and realizes this is who I have come here to be. Now you may be feeling like you're falling at 90 miles an hour, like the rug's been pulled out from under you, like things are not going very well in your life right now at all. But I am here to tell you that you have a gift that you may not even know you have. Just like that baby eaglet, there is something going on here to help you see what it is that gift you came to bring. That's the beauty of adversity. That's the beauty of the hardships that we go through. We never come out the same, and we always come out with gifts we didn't know we had. That's the magnificence of the stuff that's hard. But if we start sitting there and thinking, oh my God, this is hard. Oh my God, if I could only change the circumstance. Oh my God, if things could only be different, then my life would be better. Then you'd be in that idea that change your circumstance, change your life actually works. But it doesn't. It's change your thinking, change your life. I heard this story about this um, the grandfather, he's asleep, has a big mustache, and grandkids, just to play a joke on him, go in, and they put this incredibly smelly cheese on his mustache. And so when he wakes up, he's like, oh my God, it stinks in here. And so he goes into the other room, and he goes, oh my God, it stinks in here too. And then he goes outside, and he goes, oh my God, the whole world stinks. In our movement, we call that stinking thinking. And doesn't it feel that way sometimes, right? You've got this circumstance, and you're sure if you just move to another room, that circumstance will go away, but it seems to go along with you because you're carrying your stinking thinking with you. That happened to me. That happened to me. I was sure that the circumstance, I used to think of freedom as a circumstance as opposed to a quality of life. And I, had, and I had defined what that circumstance looked like, this freedom, right? I defined it as having all the money in the world I needed to do whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted to do it. And I had sold a business, so I had that money. I had all the money I needed to do whatever I wanted. I moved to Asheville, North Carolina, and one day I find myself standing on a bridge looking out at the most gorgeous view broke down crying about how unhappy I was. Because I had taken my stinking thinking with me. I had moved from New York and sold my business and moved to this gorgeous area thinking that was gonna do it. And I could do anything I wanted any time of day or night. But I still had my stinking thinking with me. It's changing our thinking. And the thinking I want you to think about is that you're being pruned. It's not the diagnosis. It's not your age. 
It's not the hurting in your body. It's not the loss of the income, loss of the job, loss of a loved one. These are the opportunities that we are offered to become fully who it is ours to be. You wouldn't have the circumstance you have if you didn't have the resources to rise above it. I'm not talking about something as simple as this too shall pass. I'm talking about it's way better than that. That this, what you've got going on here is something within you that can help you rise to something higher and greater than you ever even thought possible. This is our opportunity to rise into something, to remember that our pruning is for blooming. You are being pruned to bloom. Say it with me. I am being pruned to bloom. I am being pruned to bloom. I, you think I'm driving this home a lot? Yes, because if you can remember this in your time of need, then you would have not abandoned the truth. And by not abandoning the truth, you have put to power, you have put to use this power in the universe that is for your good. Life can be feel so hard sometimes. And yet there must be something there when you are feeling like you're falling at 90 miles an hour that you don't recognize you even have yet. Just like that baby eaglet. I heard about this guy who started with this home improvement company as a salesman and kept working his way up and working and his dream was to someday run the company and he's working his way up and he's working his way up in his company doing a great job his numbers are fantastic and he keeps improving the company and the company keeps doing better and better he gets up to where he's president of the company and people are now talking about him becoming the next CEO of the parent company well the CEO of the parent company would have none of that and so fabricated a whole scheme to get the guy fired. So after he spent 20 odd years with this company, going after his dream, growing and growing and growing, he was fired and his reputation was ruined. Again, he could have easily gone, oh my God, I gave this, the, my life to the best years of my life to this company. <laughs> I worked so hard for them and this is how they treat me now and I can't even get a job anywhere else because they also ruined my reputation. He could have done that. And said, he said, no, I think I'm gonna rise out of this. And he had this idea for a new home improvement company called the Home Depot. <laughs> so he got together with some buddies of his put together some investment capital and instead of squandering, you know, squalling in, in the upset and all that, he just went ahead and started a new company. And the company he used to work for, nobody's ever heard of them anymore. That's what's possible. But he didn't know, he didn't know he had that other dream in him. That's the thing about it. He didn't know he had this other dream until he was fired. He didn't know that there was something greater in him until adversity struck. And so that's what I'm offering you today, that you don't know the gift that you have, but I can tell you it's there. It's always there. There is something in you that is wanting to rise, not just to this too shall pass situation, and it doesn't matter your age. If you have a dream, if you have a desire to do something and give something to life, then you have the ability to do it. You have the skills, you have the wherewithal, you have everything you need, even if you cannot see it within yourself. That's the beauty of all this, is that it's within us, and it's just dying to get out, you know? And sometimes it takes some really loud, atrocious, devastating news, incidents to get us to finally get off our happy butts and do something different and reach up to that place in which we are higher and greater. Reach up to that place where that divine comes shining out of our hearts. 
Reach up to that place where we are not sitting in bitterness or discouragement, but instead rising up to something wonderful and magnificent and miraculous. I heard about this woman who, um, at the exact same time, was dealing with the fact that her 35-year-old brother died. Her teenage son had a terminal illness, and her father had cancer. And she was devastated and really didn't know how to move forward. So what she did was actually go into prayer. And she stayed in that place of prayer for three years as her son got a little bit healthier and her dad recovered too. Until one day, she's inspired by this idea that if kids who are terminally ill have the ability to give to somebody else who's in need, it actually raises them up. It actually makes them feel better. And so she starts a company that would have never dawned on her if she hadn't gone through what she went through. That is, at this point, touched 250,000 children in 30 states and 12, company, and 12 countries. She, she has an entire organization now of people who go into hospitals to go to the terminally ill children to offer them a chance to give to somebody else. In fact, this has a name. This is actually, <laughs> has a name to it. It's called post-traumatic growth. It turns out that this isn't an anomaly. This is actually what happens more often than not. This is actually what's possible more often than not is that people, when they go through a traumatic experience, actually come out having grown into something new that they didn't know was possible. That's what's possible for all of us here today. It doesn't have to be a major trauma. It can simply be an adversity. But when we hold that we're being pruned to bloom, that whatever is going on, we can get rid of our stinking thinking and instead prune the boom, we can have more coming into our lives than going out. What I have to say to you today is that there is a power within us. There is a power within us that knows greater than we do what it is that we are here to do and here to be, and we are getting the circumstances we need so that we can rise into that. Now we can fight it, and we can stay bitter, or we can rise. It's your choice, but that's what's possible here. So I say say yes to the circumstance you're dealing with. Say, yes, I can rise above this. It must mean there's something greater for me. Say yes to the fact that there's something greater going on in every moment of every day. Say yes to the power that is in this universe for us that is good. No matter how dark it is, you have a destiny that will shine lighter than the sun. I love you. Thank you. Take out what you're going to give and hold it in your hand. Unfold it. Unfold it. Because the power in the giving is with the prayer that goes with it. And so what we do when we hold it in as our hands is we are holding that prayer. We are holding that prayer for the greater good, for our good, for the good of all. When we hold it in our hands like this, we are knowing. That's why you uncrumple it and unfold it, because this is your prayer. So let's say our affirmation together aloud. God is the source of all supply. Money is God in action. What we give, we receive multiplied abundantly. All that God is, I am. And so it is.